Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading1et.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand, Forex and Gold, Fundamental and Technical Analysis for the week ahead starting the 19th of February. And uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, this video and my content with your fellow trading colleagues if you find the content I provide useful every week. So getting into the week ahead and it says here from Trading Economics that next week's um, investors attention will turn to the FOMC minutes release with traders scrutinizing any insight on when the Federal Reserve will start cutting rates. And that's really important because as I'll get into the video a bit later, it's really about um, uh, in the direction of uh, Forex pairs uh, determined on which central bank will be cutting their interest rates first versus uh, later on. So almost like leading and lagging. And so um, the Federal Reserve at the moment, uh, their rate cuts are being pushed back. It was expected in March and now it's um, it looks like uh, June is the uh, is the price or the time when they're looking to price in the market is looking to price in the rate cuts. And that's due to uh, stickier than expected inflation and I guess a better than expected economy. Anyways, um, simultaneously, the flash S&P global US PMIs will offer an assessment of the month's economic performance. Beyond the US, attention will extend to flash PMIs for the Eurozone, Germany, France and the UK and Japan and the LFO business climate indicator in Germany and Canada's inflation rate will also be in the spotlight. So <clears throat> lots going on, not as much as uh, as uh, last week and we'll get into uh, last week's uh, data and the, I guess the potential impact that it will have on currencies. But before we do get into that, um, I just wanted to, I guess, get into some trades and um, trade analysis. And last week, I actually didn't enter into any trades. Um, so it was one of it was one of those rare weeks where um, pretty much waiting for pullbacks. And when you're trading technicals with fundamentals, um, there are times where you have to kind of wait for the for the pullbacks to come in because really fundamentals means that you kind of you're you're determining where value is. And, uh, you know, bargain prices and cheap prices and discounts. And sometimes uh, there are no discounts. Right. So I thought I'd go over uh, some trades that I'd taken um, a couple of weeks ago in the last war, well, the last kind of trades that I'd taken and entered. And um, one of them was the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss breakdown really was taken. This trade was taken on the uh, um, the uh, 2nd of February, Friday. And this was due to the <clears throat> non-farm payrolls coming out much better than expected. And I'm still in this trade as well. So i um, still swing trading this. And so uh, my final target uh, is the completion of this uh, this unfair auction around the 8994s, somewhere around there. Looking to take some profit. And um, I've already taken half profit as well off of this. So I, this trade is really a break-even trade. And um, and so going back to let me just sorry uh, zoom out a little bit. I've zoomed in a bit too much on this. Uh, if we go back to the um, uh, to that day on in the uh, in the Discord uh, group that I run um, for trading one eighty on the second of the second, uh, basically you know we were talking about it being a huge miss, and I said. Uh, jobs and inflation all point to economy doing better than expected and sticky inflation fed holding for longer <clears throat> and so uh spencer had uh you know at the time he was looking at you know 107 uh 1.07 50s on the eu um and he reached his target uh and so um the fellow was also saying that prices kind of moved too rapidly to enter and i said to him, no need to chase. Uh, I'm waiting for a candle close on uh, to close in 25 minutes, and then hopefully data will follow through. <clears throat> and cautious on a little bit of stop hunting, but ultimately this was the uh, the entry, right? So that was the close that I was waiting for in 25 minutes, which was on a four hour time frame, and um, it did follow through, right? And so the trade um, is on its way. It's just pulling back, and hopefully more supportive data for the dollar will continue pushing prices higher i have moved my stop now up to um just below this 
uh, this entry uh, or this candlestick here now and so um i'm in i am in some profit so i can't lose now uh, my my uh, break even price now is above my entry <clears throat> and like i said i've already taken half profit off at, at a one to one and so this now is a profitable trade regardless of what happens if prices come down and stop me out it's still a profitable trade <clears throat> the second trade um that i guess i give a bit of an update on is the uh aussie swiss franc and again this was from a few weeks ago i spoke about this uh during the week i think it must have been the weekend of uh that video that i had made and um this was again in the group on the second we were talking about this entry here and it was a stop hunt so i said everyone who was interested in going long on the aussie swiss this is a nice stop hunt setup there will be volatility next week due to the rba statement so if you um uh, so you can ignore this setup and wait until after the statement if it seems too risky or you, if you want to reduce your position size so um i had entered into this trade as a, as a stop hunt setup and um again just an update on uh on that trade one second it was here <clears throat> so the original entry was this candlestick here i managed to get in on a second entry on a pullback a 50 percent pullback which i ended up taking a one-to-one -one profit target on so that then makes it at least a break-even trade and i swing trading this position uh, the original uh, market entry position, which now has reached up to a 2.4, uh, 2.41 to 1. Now, um, I have taken uh, some profit off, about 70% profit off of this uh, swing trade with the anticipation that the rest of the 30% should move up to um, uh, complete this unfair auction here. And also as well, I have moved my uh, stop loss up to below this uh, this uh, swing right here. So my stop loss now is above my original entry. I've taken 70% off of that trade and swing trading the rest. And I'll just continue to trail my stop below, um, below certain uh, daily swings until it reaches or if it reaches the highs. And so... Yeah, those are the, the trades that I'm in. And also there was one trade, uh, the um, Swiss uh, Yen. Uh, many of the guys know about the Swiss Yen um, trade that I was in. Um, and again, I did go over it in this uh, in, in previous weeks. And I'm, I'm actually uh, profitable on that trade as well. And I'm out of that trade. So I'm actually flat now for the week, <clears throat> taking profit and waiting for some more setup. So that's really where I am uh in terms of the trades haven't had a losing trade in a while so it's been all good uh, over the past uh maybe about a few weeks now about three three weeks or so definitely since the beginning of the uh the month and so um that's the trade update i'm flat on all trades and if i get into any new trades the guys in the group will know uh what trade setups i'm looking at as well as um as uh, some other uh, information. If you do want to join uh, the Trading 180 Mentoring Group and learn about the fundamentals and technicals, um, I am opening up the uh, mentoring around Easter time. So you've got a bit of time um, to ponder on whether you do want to join and uh, watch uh, a lot of my YouTube videos and see if it's uh, you know a, a, a way of trading that you would want to be interested in. Anyways, let's get into the uh, weekly analysis and starting off as we usually do on the uh, dollar uh, index. And this is an equally weighted dollar index. So this is not the DXY. Uh, this is not the uh, USDX. This is an equally weighted dollar index. And I'll leave the description uh, in the uh, box below if you're watching this on YouTube on how to um, uh, and why I use the equally weighted um, uh calculation so i had the calculation and uh and the video explaining exactly why i use the equally weighted dollar index but um going forward looking at the dollar index uh, looking for really a bit of a more of a pullback um i need for me prices to come down a bit more it has come down into this demand zone 
uh, which is definitely a decent confluence if you have as, as you have demand and you also have resistance which is turn support um i think a deeper pullback would be really nice to buy the dollar my bias is really to buy the dollar continue to buy the dollar as i think the uh, the dollar um is really kind of bucking the trend in terms of um it's the expectation of the market right or, or, or in terms of rate cuts and so um there was some news here this week that was talking about sticky inflation reaffirms the fed's caution on rate cuts and so us the us inflation fla failed to moderate as hoped with housing costs airfares medical care and recreation all keeping the run rate for month on month inflation hot their favored measure of inflation the core pce deflator may be cooling nicely but the mixed messages mean that the fed can't relax with little inclination for imminent cuts so i mean it doesn't necessarily make any sense for the Fed to cut, you know, in in March um, at their next meeting. And so uh, the market is kind of expecting that it's likely to be in um, in June is is the next actual um, highest probability. Of course, the data needs to support that narrative. If the data doesn't support the narrative, then um, uh, of course that, that that can actually change. If, for example, inflation starts to come in a lot lower. Um, then the Fed are likely to cut sooner. But as long as inflation remains, continues to remain sticky, I think um, the dollar will, should continue to be a buy. So any pullbacks on the dollar for me, um, uh, buying opportunities, not necessarily on the dollar index. So moving on to the uh, dollar yen and the dollar yen. Um, the yen this week had some um, <clears throat> not so uh, good news the yen and uh, japan's economy actually went into a, a recession unexpectedly contracted for a second quarter so disappointingly the japanese economy has fallen back into a technical recession on the back of weak domestic demand the bank of japan will likely now become even more cautious about any policy change we believe the june rate hike option is still valid but with a growing possibility of a delay until the third quarter of 2024. So they're quite pessimistic in terms of the uh, Bank of Japan and when they're likely to hike rates. And the Bank of Japan are the only central bank looking to hike rates uh, this year. So when we look at the um, dollar yen, uh, with the dollar actually um, you know, moving to the upside in terms of it being stronger than expected, um, I do think that the um, the dollar is definitely a buy, but uh, as we get higher into this 151, 152 area, um, what tends to happen is is that the um, Bank of Japan may look to actually um, uh, intervene to stop the the, the, the yen from uh, depreciating too much because a devalued currency adds to inflation. And last thing they want at the moment in a contraction um, and, and a recession is for inflation to keep rising. That's what's known as stagflation. So um, we are into what is known as an intervention zone. So the higher we go is the more likely the Bank of Japan are likely to, um, you know, intervene and try and push the prices down. So although this is a pair that I'm keenly watching, it's definitely going to be a difficult um, trade in terms of um, timing when that intervention may uh, look to happen right so you've got an area of supply here it could even happen just above the level in a potential stop hunt um, but if you're looking at just basically pullbacks and buying dollar against against the yen then I think any pullbacks into a nice demand zone like around here is going to be decent there is a smaller demand zone right here which uh, also occurred this week, but probably a bit deeper pullback would be preferable. And you've also got a level of resistance there as well as um, <clears throat> some confluence. Uh, looking at the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD this week uh, did break above that level. In fact, it was a nice stop hunt above a nice clear and obvious level. But went into that supply zone on the daily and then, you know, rejected the CAD. Uh, for me is um, is still a buy. We do have inflation data this this uh, this week coming out, and I think if again inflation remains uh, sticky, 
then the uh, Canadian dollar should appreciate. Now, I'm not necessarily trading it against the US dollar, against weaker currencies like the Swiss franc, but if you are looking to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar, then you're really looking for any pullback into a supply zone before looking at going short. And if you're looking to buy the US dollar against the Canadian dollar, then you're looking for really pullbacks into these zones before looking at going long. And um, But this is not necessarily a pair that I'm interested in as you've got two strong currencies really um, competing against each other. So um, it's a harder read, to be fair. So, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, not put this on my um, on my list of uh, currencies to trade. Uh, looking at the pound and the pound this week also had inflation data, uh, sorry, GDP data come out, which was um, just very disappointing. But even, although it was kind of expected, and it says here, UK growth outlook um, improving despite fourth quarter setbacks. So there's a bit of a positive spin on on the uh, UK recession. It says here, the UK may have met the definition of a technical recession in the fourth quarter, but the data appears to be hugely volatile beneath the surface. And in any case, the growth outlook is looking brighter for 2024. Remember too, that the Bank of England is focused not on growth, but services, inflation and wages as a guide for when to begin cutting rates. And so... Um, you know, with that being said, the, the, the pound necessarily hasn't sold off as much because, um, although again, the, uh, the UK economy went into a recession, it hasn't necessarily swayed the bank of England's decision as to when they are likely to cut rates. Therefore you're not seeing necessarily a massive sell off. I mean, initially I thought there would be definitely a, a bit of a sell off, but, um, you know, the devil is always in the details when it comes to understanding, you know, the fundamentals. So um, it's not just a case of, you know, just sell, 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 or buy, buy, buy. You have to really understand the uh, the nuances. And so, um, although I don't think that the pound is gonna be a buy, I definitely don't think that the, um, uh, for now, I don't think that the uh, the pound is also a straight sell. There are reasons to buy or sell, and also buy and sell the, uh, the, the pound. Um, again, if the market kind of shrugs off uh, the um, the GDP data because remember as well GDP data is um, lagging it doesn't mean it's bad but it is lagging meaning that we're getting fourth quarter data in the first quarter because there's a lot of information to calculate for the economists to calculate and um, and come up with obviously the GDP number so if the market is more focused on um, you know this quarter and whether there's growth this quarter and there was decent retail sales that came out I think it was where was it it was uh was it this yeah retail sales came out uh, at 3.4 percent on friday and so um that is a bit more forward looking and so if there's still positive data uh, showing that the economy isn't necessarily as bad or the first quarter data won't be as bad and continue to contract and the uh, pound and the uk economy won't stay in a recession then um, in fact, you could see a little bit of upside or at least what was known as a ranging market or, you know, what I term to be an auction. So um, the pounds, you can find reasons to buy or sell the pound at the moment. Um, but against the, the dollar, I think it should. Um, I mean, I think this area here is actually quite nice for a sell. This uh, supply zone right here is decent for a um a short trade so let's see what happens uh, there especially the top end of this zone is quite nice but uh either way you can look for reasons to buy the uh, dollar or sell or, or buy the pound but again not really a pair that i'm very interested in at the moment because the fundamentals aren't 100 percent uh, clear there's no really clear divergences uh the pound yen again um pound yen uh, not selling off as much because at the same time you had the UK recession announced, you had the uh, Japanese recession. So, um, yeah, it, it seems like, um, again, two, two currencies where the market may look to shrug off uh, the data. And so, um, again, not really a pair that I'm looking to trade, but from a uh, purely technical perspective, uh, perspective i think the nearest demand zone to look for any kind of buy trade is going to be down uh down here if you're looking to short uh the uh the market i think you'd have to really look for these um these 2015 highs 
um, that would definitely be a level and an area that you may want to look towards or if you get proven supply where prices you know do come down then you're looking for a pullback into a supply zone before then going short so that would really be what you're looking for in terms of um, trading this pair but ultimately again right now this week um, not nothing I'm not something I'm looking uh, at taking uh, euro dollar and the euro dollar is something that I am interested in in terms of some shorts uh, so this week we did have prices come down into the 107 round number uh, and that demand zone it did bounce off of there but uh, we also uh, have a supply zone now I am more of a buyer of the dollar over the um, over the euro still not convinced that the euro is a buy uh, as of yet not against the dollar anyway and so there is uh, scope to potentially look for uh, some sell trades intraday here or preferably uh, probably a bit further up if it pulls back around here now again there is some uh, PMI data coming out for uh, for Europe this week and so if it does come out um, yeah PMI flash if it does come out uh, stronger than expected or better than expected and it's forecasted at four point, uh, sorry, forty six point one. Um, then that may have uh, a, a, maybe a marginal effect. But I think if it comes out weaker than expected, then um, then you should see this probably roll over. Um, and then you've got business climate. But um, yeah, uh, I don't think that the uh, the that Europe is really a buy just yet. Germany is suffering, and in fact, there is actually I've been reading articles that there's potential for parity to come into play or at least the 104s um, could come into play if the if Europe is seen as um, cutting rates sooner than the uh, than the Fed right and so uh, this is an article from Bloomberg it says here euro area economy is losing momentum EU says slashing outlook so they've downgraded their economic uh, growth forecasts and the euro economy the euro area economy is entering uh, a 2024 is entering 2024 on a weaker footing than previously expected according to new european union forecasts I anticipate another year of subdued growth so again not looking great i mean growth is 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 contracting uh, not just in europe but everywhere but it's you know the the question to ask is who's the best of the worst and um although there is contractions expected in in the us they're still um better placed or bet yeah i would say better placed than in Europe in terms of the economy and also as well um, uh, interest rates or the potential for interest rates so um, <clears throat> shorts for me at these levels is really what I'm looking for uh, on a pullback uh, euro yen I'm interested in this as well still interested in this I do think that there's the potential for either a stop hunt either a trade now a stop hunt above the level or a move up to the supply zone and again Think that'll be kind of determined by what happens uh, this week with European data, and there is actually uh, J a Japanese data says Bank of uh, Balance of Trade, sorry, um, and balance of trade typically doesn't necessarily have a, a, a meaningful impact on price anyway. But um, I'm looking for potential shorts on this. So shorts right now, I haven't entered into anything, but I'm looking uh, at a potential setup. If it doesn't occur, then I'm looking for moves um, a bit higher um, in anticipation that the Bank of Japan will uh, kind of move past or shrug off the recession and still look to uh, potentially hike rates. Um, if you're looking for any uh, any buy trades and looking to buy uh, the Euro Yen, then you're looking at a pullback into that demand zone, right, so around here before looking at going long or um, further down into uh, the 159s before looking at uh, any kind of long trades. My bias is to look for short still. Um, Euro pound, and again, although Europe, or well, the pound, I guess, uh, and the UK are in a, in, in a recession is the headlines. If the market is looking past the, res the, uh, the uh, recession and the Bank of England is still looking to actually um, uh, 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 cut rates later than Europe, then any pullbacks really should be seen as uh, shorting opportunities. And I still think that 
this is really the uh, the direction of travel, the path of these resistance up into these areas um, of supply and uh, and resistance. So um, if prices do come up to around these areas, the 85 or 86 round number or 85 90s, then in fact, I will look for some short trades around here as well. But again, it does depend on um, supporting uh, fundamental uh, data. And when um, you know we look at central bank forecasts, let me just zoom out a little bit, one second, you'll see uh, this is from ING. And what uh, they've done is they've come up with what they expect uh, the central banks uh, to start doing in um, this year in terms of their uh, monetary policy and whether they're likely to, you know, when they're likely to cut. And you can see that ING, uh, which is a Dutch bank, they um, forecast the Federal Reserve and Europe to start cutting at the same time, which it looks like it is uh, for, for May, right, for May or June. Um, and in fact, the Bank of England, right, which is the grey line, to actually start cutting later. Um, the Bank of Japan also to start um, hiking um, it looks like after after maybe around about May as well. So you've got uh, out of the you know the pound, the dollar, and the euro. It looks like uh, the pound should probably be a bit more supported uh, currently if this does come through. But against all of those three, really, if the bank when the Bank of Japan do start to kickstart their hiking cycle, then um, the yen should really be the buy out of. Um, against all three of those uh, those currencies as you'll start you'll see the divergence start to take place where you have you know cuts happening um on for the fed the bank of england and, and europe and then you have japan who are looking to hike so you've got a, a nice divergence or convergence trade um idea going on here for at least the rest of the year but again this needs to um kick in start to kick in before um Actually, no, I wouldn't say it before, but um, it starts to look like it wants to happen, uh, like a buy the rumor, sell the fact, but the data needs to support uh, this 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 forecast. And so um, that's where I am with the euro pound. Um, the Aussie dollar, again, bouncing off of this demand zone here. Um, I do think the Australian dollar is a buy, again, not necessarily against the US dollar. But um, if you are looking to be a buyer of the um, of the Australian dollar against the US dollar, then you're looking for um, actually matter of fact, you're looking for buys in demand. And if you're looking to be a buyer of the US dollar, yeah, against Australian dollar, then you're looking for shorts at the uh, supply zone. But again, not really a pair that I'm looking to trade um, currently. And then finally, gold. Again, there was some good news. Um, last week for the dollar and gold uh, fell uh, sticky inflation and then we've had a bit more of a pullback but i do think that gold is a decent buy as we start to you know um uh, at least uh, move towards the middle and the uh, end of the year and once the federal reserve do start their cutting cycle then i believe that gold would be a really nice buy uh, the timing of this right now isn't necessarily fantastic in terms of looking for um, buy trades for gold. Of course, you know you're at the mercy really of the Federal Reserve. But if you are looking to uh, to short gold, then the um, then basically what you're saying is you're looking to buy the dollar and vice versa. But um, at the moment, I really haven't got uh, a short term bias on this because. Uh, I am actually bullish on the dollar. So, I mean, if I'm bullish on the dollar, then, you know, I'd really be looking for uh, short trades in and around this area um, here. So, yep, that's where we are in terms of uh, gold. But if there are, if there is any uh, dollar news that comes out where it's likely to push the Fed to cut rates sooner, then you're going to start to see, or you should start to see gold uh, move to the upside. So, uh, that's it for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the analysis. Uh, feel free to, again, uh, like, subscribe, share uh, the content, and um, I will see you all in the next video. Take care.